I'm Johanna Skouris. Uh, I'm an author and a psychotherapist. I'm the author of this book called Standing Up for Yourself, The Art of Self-Assertion. I'm here to talk about, um, briefly, depression, bipolarity, and schizophrenia. The theme of this talk is really about chemical imbalance or learned helplessness. Now, I'm not a fan of medication. I've often said this. Uh, if the meds will get you out of the house, however, get you to be able to go back to your job and function, that's good. But the underlying issues of any of your conditions, if they are not dealt with, they will continue to deal with you. So um, let's look briefly at, um, say, the, the alcoholic, for instance. I've worked with many alcoholics, many addicts, and I do hear constantly, well, you know, it's a disease. It's an inherited disease. Grandpa was an alky, dad was an alky. It makes sense. I'm going to be an alcoholic. My question really is, does a person, does an alcoholic inherit a genetic predisposition to be an alcoholic? Or does that person inherit the pathology of the parent? Now, the word pathology clinically means sort of diseased. In this case, let's call it uh, disturbed thinking. So it, it's a question that I, I can't necessarily prove right or wrong, but it certainly is a good theory to consider. Um, you know, I think of the brain as wet cement. I may have said this before on the assertiveness um, videos. Think of a child who is totally without language skill, all sensation. That means that child is recording everything he sees and hears, and it's going to stay with him for the rest of his life. That means when he sees his parents fighting, uh, yelling, drinking, whatever they're doing, we learn by imitation, unfortunately. And parents are our role models. So uh, take a look at where you're coming from. These issues of depression, bipolarity, and schizophrenia all have severe family dysfunction. Uh, I'm not ignoring multiple chromosome screw up as being capable of creating severe conditions. Um, always have a complete physical medical exam before you ever accept a psych diagnosis. Lyme disease and copper imbalances can manufacture pseudo uh, psychosis. So that's all I'm going to say right now about that. Now, um, depression, most folks know, does deal with anger that is not really being expressed, never mind acknowledged. And when we keep something in for a long enough time, the weight begins to bring us down. So that depressed person is sinking into a hole, a very dangerous hole. You know, the depression is, is kind of like a massive coat of armor. It is kind of protects the person at the same time that it imprisons the person. Now, feelings of worthlessness and helplessness are learned. We, we don't come into the world feeling that way. Uh, a child's helplessness is legitimate when he can't change his own diapers, uh, can't uh, get his own food. But ours, which is psychological helplessness, pathological helplessness, you have to look at who actually um, is significant in your life that contributed to those feelings of worthlessness and helplessness. You have to be willing to at least consider that people often make us feel a certain way. And this still goes back to the question, um, what have I allowed that person or persons to do to make me feel this way? So that's the bad news is that we had to learn it, but the good news is we can unlearn it. But we have to be willing to accept back to that condition of our rights. I brought this up before and I'll continue to bring it up in every video because when we don't have the right to our feelings, <laughs> When we don't have the right to our feelings, um, the right to our anger, uh, the right to pleasure, these fundamental rights, when denied, can cause us tremendous grief, tremendous frustration. So whether we go in the direction of depression, bipolar, or ultimately schizophrenia, more severe, uh, that's about the causes uh, based on our own individuality, why we go in one direction or another. But what I want to talk about, though, is um, we have to we have to learn how to be this have to feel this way. 
And if we do not, if we're not willing to get in touch with those feelings, uh, there is no way we're going to change. So if you're on your meds, at least be dealing with those particular issues, especially in your family life. Uh, right now, I want to also look at a condition of bipolarity called the lady Jackie, 24. Uh, articulate, meaning she's well-spoken, pleasant. Pleasant because people-pleasing is a, a real necessity for her. She's afraid of her own harshness, her own negativity. Now, she got diagnosed with manic depressive um, bipolar back when she was around 14. She spent a lifetime trying to run from her own feelings, her anger, uh, her frustrations. She has an eating disorder because she has tremendous guilt and shame about her sexuality. Brought up with family values that uh, sex and anger expression uh, were, quote, bad, and therefore she is unwilling to really uh, confront those values that were placed upon her basically involuntarily. Now, Jackie is so concerned with pleasing others. Um, here's, a, here's my real question regarding her condition. My question is, is well, but let me go back to Jackie's needs. You know, every time there's a crisis with Jackie, uh, she clings to the family who, who basically encourage her support, her helplessness. Now, Jackie actually resents their, um, their, her treating, them treating her like a child. Um, and actually the family is kind of irritated by her constant crisis making. And here's Jackie's dilemma. She needs their help. She's also um, frustrated, resentful that they actually continue to treat her like a child. And at the same time, um, she's terrified of losing that help. So look at her conditions. She has need, she has resentment, and she has terror. Well, you, you can't have all of those conditions causing her to go up, down, left, right, all over the place. So my question is, again, is Jackie bipolar? because of a chemical imbalance or because she lacks a backbone. Backbone means courage, strength, stamina. You'll fight for what you believe in. Um, now, here's the other question also. It's like the chicken and the egg. Does the lack of a backbone actually create a chemical imbalance? So this is food for thought and it's, it's very frustrating because these are theories I can't prove other than having dealt with these kinds of circumstances in my past where individuals were willing to acknowledge these truths. I can't say that everybody is also willing to do so, but I recommend you at least consider uh, what is going on with you and your family members or your partner. Um, who is invading your privacy? Who's trying to control you and take away the values that you believe in and insert their own? Who has control, in other words? Uh, let's look briefly at the schizophrenic. Now, so schizophrenia is uh, probably the one of the most serious conditions to try to work with. What has happened is the schizophrenic is actually terrified of his feelings. The depressed person, the bipolar uh, person, is fearful of their feelings. But the schizophrenic is at another level. When fear escalates, when it continues to build inside, fear eventually escalates uh, into terror. Anger, when that also stays inside and escalates, anger eventually escalates into rage. For the schizophrenic, his terror of his body, that means his feelings, his sexuality, his rights, all of that stuff. The schizophrenic doesn't believe he or she has the tools in order to protect himself. Um, and again, it's in a severe family dysfunction setting. So what does the schizophrenic do? He escapes. He tries to leave the body, if only symbolically. Not, unfortunately, some, uh, some individuals do commit suicide. But the schizophrenics is an emotional suicide. He goes and lives in his head. This is where his delusions and hallucinations begin to flourish. In his head, he can build a little fortress of fantasy. He can believe that maybe he's really Napoleon, um, Muhammad, um, 
may be Jesus Christ. They often choose individuals who have historical power. They're famous or infamous, it doesn't matter which, as long as they're visible. Because in his own mind, he feels like he is also worthless, not even aware, being aware of other, by other people. His identity is unformed, but all he lives on is a cauldron of anger and frustration. So if he lives in that fortress, that's La La Land. He's okay, even though he knows he's not alive. He is unwilling to go into his feelings. Now, the other way, he can also create a fort, meaning he's got ammunition. He has voices giving him commands, uh, maybe do in mama and daddy. And the danger is he may, in fact, obeying these commands, uh, actually murder his family. And then basically, well, the devil made me do it, um, not having to take any responsibility for our actions is a very um, malicious kind of way of getting our cookies without having to accept the consequences. Um, yes, I know multiple gene screw up, I said earlier, is a reality that could be influencing the schizophrenic state of mind. But look at what is going on first. What has caused that individual to escape into his or her head? What is so terrible about his own body? We have to be willing to look and examine, uh, have I been made to feel shame about my sexuality? Do I not deal with my feelings and they're, therefore they're dealing with me? Um, I have said the same thing. We start with this. This is that sheet that we put, it's a little crooked. Uh, this is the sheet that helps us constantly get in touch with feelings that we're afraid of, we're not aware of. That's the first road to gaining the truth of our own identity. We have to be willing to look at what are we doing? You know, to go back to Jackie for a second, um, she wanted to, uh, well, she acted like a child but wanted to be treated like a woman. Doesn't work that way. We have to understand what are we doing? And that means that we can also try to change our own behavior. I've said before also that as long as I know what I feel, then perhaps I can at least control my actions. I am responsible for my actions, not my feelings. And if I can accept that, the whole life begins to change. Change is not going to be easy, but you have to decide is the way in which you're living um, a true way for you? Is, is there life that could have more freedom? Um, when are we willing? to stand back and say, I've had enough. Um, my future needs to belong to me uh, and not to, perhaps to the people who surround me. So as um, soon as you have some questions about any of this, and I hope I hear from some folks, I'll be willing to answer. But you can change. It's strictly up to you. Uh, how long do you continue to be a victim? And when do you decide that you've had enough? Some folks, um, may go into their 60s and 70s. They know they should change, but change is not easy, uh, and there are consequences. We, we have to have courage, and courage starts with the first step. First acknowledge how you feel, and from that point on, change will follow. Okay. Um, next video that I'm going to talk about next week is about our sexuality. It's actually about the animal within, and again, this goes into a more serious focus on the issues that I've been talking about previously. The animal within is aggressive and our fear of our own aggression can be a catalyst as to why food, uh, drugs, alcohol, why we escape. We have shame and guilt and fear. <laughs> Same old feelings all the time, but they're never gonna go away for as long as we live. Um, Arthur Miller is a was a playwright who said, Suicide actually tries to kill two people. He said the suicidal victim uh, certainly wants to do himself in, but he also wants company. He's trying to get back at the person or persons who have made him feel this way. So ponder that. Don't succumb to fear because there are solutions. Okay, hopefully see you next week.